DaVinci Resolve reveals new editing techniques to me all the time. It's kind of like how you can reveal the contents of multiple bins at once by shift or command mouse clicking them in the media pool. So to me, this was not the most intuitive thing when I first started editing with DaVinci. So welcome to episode two of the little things that I use to work faster and easier in Resolve as a professional commercial editor. Keep finder folders. So I always suggest that you keep your project nice and tidy inside one single job folder with predefined nested folders. Sometimes you want to keep that exact same organization in DaVinci and sometimes you don't. So to keep the organization from the operating system, it could be Windows, you just drag to the far left column in the bin list area and you keep the finder organization. It's just like that, so that far left area. And then there's those times when you want to add files to an existing bin. For that, you can just drag a finder folder to the right side, and it's only going to import the elements, okay? It's going to ignore all the folders on the hard drive. In other words, it discards the folder structure, and no new bins are created. The same happens if you drag directly from any finder to the timeline. So to recap, if you want to keep your folder structure from the finder, you drag to the left side. And if you don't want the folders and you just want the elements, you drag to the right side inside of a bin. Multiple bin windows. There's actually, there's two ways to navigate multiple bins at the same time that I know of. So I'm going to show you both and then you can decide what you prefer. Click the three dot menu to reveal the dual pane media pool. And honestly, this is the view that I use most of the time. I'll use the dual pane view with one bin open to timelines and then the other bin's gonna be open to clips a lot. So timelines and clips. But I use the dual pane view often enough that I actually set it to a keyboard shortcut to toggle it on and off. And because keyboard shortcuts are panel aware, I use S for single pane and D for dual pane. So that way I have the flexibility to manage my screen space. Anytime you use find and media pool, which is a powerful right click option with tab timelines and clips, uh, it'll always take you to the last clicked window. So this is important to know. If you don't want to lose your place on one specific bin window, click the media pool window that you want to open that clip in and then right click to find it in the media pool command. Okay. Click the bin first, then find a media pool. Oh, and it's also good to know about this expand button in the upper left. That's going to toggle full height or half screen height of the media pool. And these expand buttons are all over the DaVinci interface, so get used to them. Another way to open multiple bins simultaneously is to right click and open the bin in a new window from the contextual menu. If you're from Avid, this is like a floating bin, you'll be used to it. I find this more useful though if you have multiple monitors or if you don't mind using App Expose on a Mac. The reason you need to get comfortable with App Expose and the default shortcut, control down arrow on a Mac, is because as soon as you go away from that newly opened floating bin, it's gonna disappear. You can swipe down on a trackpad with three or four fingers on a MacBook or control down arrow to see that bin again. BFBs, the big floating bins, are useful when I have long timeline strings of text and I need to see all of it, but I'm working on a lower resolution display like a laptop. Post bin duplicates, all right? Always work with versions and never rename timeline renders. This is my hit by a bus precaution and I ride a scooter through the streets of Manhattan, so it's a legit concern. Anyone? including yourself, can reopen an old project and make changes to a post you made for a client for future revisions. Here's how it works. Keep unique timeline names and versions. Duplicate them anytime you make alternate options or address client notes and iterate with a new version number on the actual timeline name in the project. That's the key, in the project. Create and keep a bin in DaVinci just for keeping track of copies of timelines every time you post or deliver anything. Frame.io or Dropbox or maybe even the new Blackmagic presentations. So here's the thing to know. Resolve doesn't actually really like timelines in the same project with the same name. So there is a trick here, is, and that's to option drag from the working bin to the dated post bin. You never rename that timeline, and anyone can always search back for that version by file name years down the line. But don't forget to hit that carrot for searching through all the bins which is not the default, but we already talked about that in last week's tutorial, right? Anyways, I'm Chadwick, this is Creative Video Tips, and because there is so much more to learn, 
I'll see you in that next video.